In this video we're going to talk about a couple different ways to make a rope border. Um, for this particular stone they want it to look kind of like a um, like a belt buckle, um, but we're going to do rope around it. So what we'll do first is we'll make the oval for the stone size and I'll just go with 36 inches wide by 24 inches tall and hit F4 to zoom to that. Um, now even though that that's the size of the die, our rope border is actually going to go underneath that, so I want to pull that in just a little bit. Um, so I'll go to the contour tool and just click on the outline and drag it down. As I drag, uh, it'll give us a size here for how much we're pulling in. Um, I think maybe three quarters of an inch would be okay. Maybe not even that much. Let's go half of an inch. All right, so we'll go half of an inch, and once that's done, we'll go up to Object and say Break Contour Group Apart. And then I'm going to just click off on the white so that nothing is selected. And now we are able to select that independent of the one that uh, we had before. So the first thing that we need to do is actually make our, our rope uh, sections that we're going to use. And I'm just going to zoom in so that we know approximately how big to make this rope here. I'm going to go from about here oh, to about the other side of that line there. Our rope is going to end up being centered on this line, and so that's why I'm starting above and below that. That line segment that I created, I want to change that to a curve. You can right click and say to curve, or you can come up here and click on this convert to curve button, or you can just hit 2 on the keyboard um, if you have Memorial Designer installed. So once you've got that to a curve, I'm just going to rotate the handles here remove the handles so that we can get a bit of a, a curved section. Something something like that maybe. And depending on how much we want this rope to curve, I mean if I were to bring that down a little bit like this, it changes the way that the rope looks, so that's all dependent on how we want it to look. The next thing I'll do is make a copy of that, so I'll just hit the plus sign on my numeric keypad which makes a copy exactly over the top of that one, or you can hit control C and control V. And then that copy I'm going to mirror horizontally and vertically. So now you can see we've got um, both of those sections there. Grabbing both of them, I will combine them together. And then I will take these ends with the shape tool and join those with J on the keyboard. Or you can always come up here and hit the join two nodes button on the property bar there. Okay, so that's a really thin piece of rope. So what I want to do is take this bottom part here and maybe drag it out a little bit. I'm going to take this top part up here and drag that one out a little bit. It's going to make our rope a little bit thicker. If I take that and move it over to the other side of itself, um, sorry, I'm going to undo that. As I drag, I'm holding control so that it stays in line, and then if I right click and let go while I'm still holding the left click, that gives me the plus sign for creating a duplicate. And then as soon as I let go of the left mouse button, then that'll give me my duplicate. So we can see right here there's a little bit more gap and there's a little bit more gap. So I might edit this a little, um, bring this maybe this way and change my curve just a tiny bit. Oops, that's the wrong one. Or, actually I'm going to undo that. Perhaps I'll just add a node. Pull that down a little. Add a node. So that's just editing one side of it. If I were to duplicate that again, you'll see that that's actually a bigger gap. So Undo, 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 undo. Alright. Here's what we'll do. We're going to edit this way down a little bit. And then we're going to pull this one back up a little bit. I don't know that there's a perfect way of creating the actual rope segments, but it seems to work okay. Alright, so we've got our rope segment. 
Now what we do, um, we'll just start with the, the one. I'm actually going to save this uh, for something later, so I'm going to make a copy of it, just drag it up here into the middle of nowhere and right click and let go and that will make a copy of that. I'll do the same thing here, just going to right click, drag and or I'm going to left click, drag, but right click while I do that and that will give me a copy. So what I'm going to do is do what's called a blend group. Over here with blend I'm going to choose this one and you can see as I hit the outline it changes the icon from that um, cross symbol to the X. So if I drag that over to this outline it gives us that same symbol but in the opposite direction which then tells us that we're creating a blend group. So as soon as I let go then it makes that group for us. A blend group, if I were to move this way over to the side you'll see um, what it does is it's going to blend from this to the other and it creates steps in between if I click on those steps, it'll actually tell us up here on the property bar now how many steps there are. And if you make less steps, then there's more spacing between them. For this instance, what we want to do is we want to take that blend group and make it go all the way around our circle. So, if we right click and drag instead of left click, we're going to right click and drag and that gives us that little uh, target looking thing. And as soon as I hit this edge, I'll let go, and then it gives me the Fit Blend to Path option. So I want to do that. Now we're going to need a lot more. I'm going to hit F4 on the keyboard so that we can see how big this is. Uh, but we're going to need a lot more than 20 steps. So that's one of the good things about the Blend group is I can add as many steps as I want, and um, and it's all interactive that way. Under more options here, I want to actually blend along the full path so it goes all the way around. And I also want to rotate all objects so that way as it goes around it rotates with that curve. Once again, if I click on my blend group, I can just click on this little up button here until I've got as many sections of rope as I want. If you need to know where you, your thing starts and finishes, you can see these little white uh, nodes there. That kind of tells you where everything starts and finishes. Or you can come up to here and say Show Start, and it will actually select the start for you. So that's our start. Um, that means this would be our end, and this is the beginning of the whole entire group. Okay, so if I were to actually take this one and rotate that, you'll see what happens is it rotates around until it gets back to the other one. I could also take that one and rotate that a little bit. But you'll see how that changes the look of the rope. The one thing is that if you rotate it too much like this, um, when it comes to actually sandblasting these, you're going to run into a little bit of problem right there. So I'm going to undo that. Undo, undo, undo. I only want a little bit of space between these, um, not a ton of space. I, I usually like to have my V-lines at about 0 0.09 inches anyway, so um, I guess I could if I wanted to make a line. So just click from here to here and set that at 0 0.09 inches. Maybe I'll change the color on it, right click on it to change it to a different color. That way, as I change this, it'll get closer and closer. I'm going to actually move this a little bit, snap this one to there. There we go. So as I add to these, they'll just keep getting closer and closer until I get to my point zero nine. And there we go, 252 of them. I can delete that. So if we zoom out, F4, then we can see the rope go the, going all the way around. Um, okay, so what we'll do is now we're going to take our blend group, select it, and go up to Object, and say Break Blend Apart. What that does is it breaks it apart so that you've got your line here, 
is independent. You can actually we can actually get rid of that now. We don't need that line anymore. And our blend group ends up being the group minus the uh, the start and the finish. So we've got that blend group. I actually ungroup all of that, and then these two pieces that we start with. Um, well, let's start over here. I would ungroup, and while it's still selected, I would combine those all together. And those two um, two pieces that we started with. Got that one and that one. So if we select those and then shift select the blend group that we combined, combine that all together. So now we've got a huge group and then I fill it in with 10% gray. Right click on no fill for the outline. And last of all, we can apply an outline to that entire thing. Um, I could just hit the frosted outline button, which would give me a 0 0.09 inch outline around the whole thing. Um, and we'll see how that works out. So we've got this line. Uh, the shape of the stone. I'm looking at the shape of the stone here. If I don't show the shape of the stone. So we'll kind of see how that rope works out. So, that's one way of making a uh, rope type design. Okay. Yep, I'm going to undo and fill this in with 30% gray. We would actually probably break this apart. Control K and get rid of the top one there. Then we can make this black and this 30%. So that is how we would uh, use a blend group and fit that blend group to a path in order to create a rope border.